as a, this is my child. He knows you as a child. He knows you. Amen. So when he knows you, whatever bondage that you are in, praise the Lord, bloodline bondage or whatsoever, you are free. Amen. So I want us to also look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Let's open to Colossians 2, 14. Amen. Can you put it on the screen for us? Thank you. Colossians 2, 14. We all know the scriptures here. Amen. We're talking about, I am free from bondage. I am free. Amen. You are free. Hallelujah. Bondage could be, it's so many things. Marital bondage, you understand? Late marriage bondage, poverty is bondage. Bondage is a whole, is a whole lot of things. But when we come to him, because it has been there, your forefathers and whatsoever have been in there and you came. And when anyone that give their life to Christ, that bondage will come out of it. Praise the Lord. And you see that the Lord begins sometimes, he begins to show you things in your dream and so many this thing. Hallelujah. But the devil also manipulates you. When you don't know the truth, you don't know your right. The enemy is able to manipulate. Hallelujah. But you have to speak to the devil. Hey, I am free. Amen. That is why it's saying the book of Colossians 2, 14. Amen. Let's go to 13. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. When you were dead in your sin. When you were dead in your sin. And in the uncircumcision of your change, flesh. Can you change your mind, please? Thank you. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Yes. When you were dead in your sins. When you were dead in your sin. When we all are dead in our sin and we were committing sin, you are committing sin. You are in sin, you are dead. When someone, when you are living in sin, you are dead in it. He said, when you are dead in your sin, praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And in the uncircumcision of your flesh. In circumcision of your flesh. God made you alive with Christ. God made you alive with Christ means when you came to Christ, he made you alive. You are no longer dead. When you confess your sins and give your life to Christ, he makes you alive. You become live in him. Your eyes open. There are so many things. There are some things that you do. You not be able to. You understand? You not be able to do when it's a sin. I say, when you fear God, there are certain things you cannot do. If you do certain things, the fear of God is not there. If you walk with God, you give your life to him, your life to Christ, you begin to walk with him. And the Holy Ghost come and live inside you. He guides you. And some things that you are doing before, if whatever you are doing before and you come to Christ and you're still doing, know that you're not saved. Yes, it's a process. You understand? You have not totally given your life to him. There are some people, they give their life to Christ, but the whole certain part. They don't want to give up on certain parts. My dear, whatever you hold on, the enemy have power over it. That means you give him access to be able to manipulate, to be able. That means he said that, let me tell you, you belongs to me. Because you hold in this part. It's like when you are doing deliverance. And I say, confess all your sins. You're not confessing to me. You hold some part. You can hold all the parts you want. But the Holy Ghost, along the line, the Holy Ghost will begin to minister and bring those things out. And I will ask you questions. Ah, the Lord is showing me you are doing, you did this. I say, why are you covering? You see, you give Satan access to be able. Because you are once upon a time dead in your sin. And now you come to Christ. You become live. You are alive. So your eyes open. And you realize that, oh my God. I didn't know that this thing is that, this thing is that. Now, I realize that this is not good. This is not that. This is, so I'm going to, I remember, I think I have shared this over and over. I remember in Europe, in my old church. And then, you, you know, we cover our hair. When I come in, they would give you the scarf at the entrance. And I'm looking at it and I say, man, these people, man. And I'll take the scarf and I'll throw it somewhere. And all that. Praise the Lord. Because I wasn't fully committed and giving my way, 
Because if you fully commit and give your will, let me tell you one thing, what the Lord does is what? Submission and listen to authority and everything. I learned this through the Holy Spirit. He said, how are you not going to listen what they're telling you? That if I minister to you and speak through you to them, who is going to listen and who is going to obey? Praise the Lord. Because your character and everything have to match and have to line up. Because you were once that dead in your sins. So when I first, you know, when the Holy Ghost came upon me strong, I had to pick up the phone and call Europe and call Auntie Maggie, call this Auntie Maggie. I'm so sorry. And today I'm so sorry. And I'm so, because that is what we call what? Repentance. Because you repent from whatever you did. You are, we now, Holy Ghost now throw light on it. And you begin to, because you are first, you first, you once dead in your sin that you didn't know better. Now you come to Christ. You cannot continue. We have to check. We cannot continue to do the things that when we were dead, that we were doing. You come to Christ. You become a new creature. So the Holy Ghost begins to walk you through and begin to teach you things you can do. That is why you do some things and then you see the Holy Ghost. Ah, why did you say that? Why did you do that? Immediately you have to correct yourself. Well, he deal with your spirit for you to make it right. Because you were once dead in your sin. But I'm talking to the people of God. Those that are giving their life to Christ genuinely. You are set free. So the enemy now don't have authority. Praise the Lord. He doesn't have authority over you in the name of Jesus. So let's continue. He forgave us all our sins. He forgave us all our sins. That's why I first I let us go to Romans for us to understand. Praise the Lord. He forgave us all our sins because why? Let's continue. 14, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. Having canceled because we have all these sins here. And now Christ, praise the Lord, he said, having canceled, having canceled, or this one say, having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us. He has canceled the requirement when we were in sin. These things here will have affected us if he did not cancel. You understand? And you are living in sin. This affects you. But when you're not living in sin and being saved and being delivered from your sin, he gave us power over sin. Everyone have the authority and everything that you have power over it. Because sin don't just get out. Sin starts from somewhere. Do you understand? And then as it's coming, you're going to know the Holy Ghost going to. So when, say he make a way of escape. So when you fall into that sin and you say, oops, I'm sorry. It's like you understand talking to someone. No, you, take to, you took time to be talking to the person. You took time to thinking about it. Whatever sin that you find, we find ourselves in. We take time to do it. You understand? But now that we come to cry, if not, this having wiped out, it will not affect you. Do you understand? He can raise charges against you. He can also bring accusations just like the way the book of Revelation talk about. We're going to get there in a minute. But we are talking about you are free. You are free from bondage. You are free from bondage. When you have given your life to Christ and you have put sin away from you, it is not when you are living in the sin and committing all abomination and all that and you think it I'm free. No. If you are in it and living in sin, the bondage is still there. You get free when you are free from sin and everything. Somebody says, ah, but how can I be free from sin? How can I? Yes, you can. The Bible says you can do all things through all, through Christ that strengthens you. If you set up your mind and everything. My husband sent me a, a clip of someone that is 61 of it. If you look at the woman's body and everything, you think she's 16 years old. And they asked her, how did you do? And she lay out everything. I said, this is dedication and this is what? Commitment. And this is consistency. When you consistent dedicate and put your mind to something, trust me, at the end, it worked for you. But you do today, tomorrow, you don't do it. You give excuse. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, you do it a little bit. And then you break off. And then you are mad. You need to learn to put your emotion in order. Ain't nobody going to do that for you. You got to do that. Praise the Lord. You stick with one thing and you believe in it and you trust God and, and you continue and you're going to see that the, the thing that you are consistent and everything. If you look at the lady's body, you would think she's 16 years old. 
But meanwhile, he got kids, got all that, and she's explaining how she got there. The same thing as a Christian, and you dedicate to see everybody, your friends might go this side and do whatsoever. One thing I have learned with Christ is that when you come to him and you give your life and you are genuinely repent, genuinely repent, you are so remorseful and sorry of things you do that is not right. Nobody told me. I pick up the phone until my gear call. I said, do you remember me? And I mentioned my name. My husband said, yeah. I said that we moved to America. He said, yeah. I said, I am so sorry. When I enter in the church and you give me the scarf to put it on my head, and I, sometimes I get mad because I don't understand, and then you sit me somewhere, and I have to go sit somewhere. I said, I want to apologize to you because when Christ is in you, you're not going to do that. You come, they tell you, you sit. You don't give nobody hard time. Hello? So I say, I'm sorry. I say, do you have so so and so's number? And I took and I have to call. And I have to apologize to everyone. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost will bring it to your attention. You begin to deal with you. You will understand. Because God is a just God. We're talking about the accuser of, of the brethren. He want to keep you in bondage. Your forefathers were in bondage. Some people were in bondage. So you want to continue the bloodline and keeping everybody in bondage. But some that be born in that bloodline and God now begin to open their eyes and he invites them and they give their life. God, no one come to cry unless he give you invitation. And he's also not going to force you. It's like you get invitation to go to birthday party or you go into a program. It's up to you get an invitation. It's up to you to, to, to attend to the party or not to attend. The same way like the Holy Ghost. He begins to invite you to come. He begins to invite you to be diligent. It's up to you for you to respond. Just like the way he said, I, I stand at the door and knock at the door. So if he, he knocks, it's up to you to open the door for him to come in. Praise the Lord. So now he said, look here. I want us to see something. We're going to see it in a minute. Praise the Lord that I am free. I'm not going to live in bondage. I will not allow the enemy to have access over my life. Praise the Lord. Just like I said, some friends are going here and then going there. You have to make a decision whether I go here or I don't go there. Praise the Lord. I remember growing up, I had a bunch of friends. Bunch of, I came to cry. No, no friend. No friend. Hello? Because where you going, everybody is not what? Because not everyone is ready to be saved. It's ready to let go of certain things. It's ready, let me tell you. Those that knew me and then they, what they know now. If they see me, they look at me and they are surprised. If I could stop certain things and I could know that this thing is not right. And God, Jesus could save me. Then know that you, he can also save you. Hello? He can do what? He can also save you. You look at your bloodline and you see certain things that don't go on well. And you realize that, no, I don't want to live my life like that. I don't want this kind of things to happen to me. So I'm genuinely going to give my life to Christ. I will genuinely see. It's not what people think of you or say or whatever they calculate. Don't worry your head with that. Let Make sure that God sees you the way. You understand that he sees you and knows you, not what man knows you or man sees you, because man can speculate and think all kinds of stuff. And not about truly genuine, they don't really know who you are. I am more concerned of how God sees me than how man sees me. Praise the Lord. He said, having wiped out all the handwriting, he have wiped out of all the sins, the things that I used to do. Christ have wiped it out. So the devil have no right to come and change. When he bring it, I will also remind him that God have wiped out the handwriting that was against me. And I will see. You can mention things, you understand. The handwriting that was against, the devil knows the things you have done. He keeps record of it. He knows things you have done, just like the way God knows things. God knows the things you have done, and the devil also knows the things you have done. Praise the Lord. You have wiped out the requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way. 
He has taken, if you are drunk, you have taken, you are, you are somebody that sleep around, you have taken. But if you continue to do it, you are in bondage. You have to take a stand. You have to do what? Take a stand. You have to take a stand. Yes, the thought might come in your mind and everything, but do not yield to the thought. Do not make it a reality. But as you are not doing that, and when the devil begin to remind you and begin to let you know, because you know things that you've done in the past and things that you understand, there are certain things that you do that only God knows. Then we just act ourselves that we are that holy and that righteous. But let me tell you, not only a koromasa, not only even for thinking about someone in a negative manner and despise them in your heart is the most great a sin. You, God, don't despise you, but you want to despise your fellow man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are coming to a place that in the world that, let me tell you, you're not going to hear preaching messages that is against, do you understand? That is against sin. No. The messages are going to be some they're going to just, special, how do you call that? They're going to just sugarcoat it because the, the, the preacher don't want to offend you. My dear, the word of God offend. The word of God, it offend. It offend you so much, especially when it offends you. That means something in you that God is trying to get rid of. So he comes there and he begins to tear you and make you feel. Make you feel that's why. Because he wants to save your soul. But he said the handwriting. Because we want to hear the word, the handwriting that has been wiped out. Yet you are living in sin and doing things that they say, no, it's not wiped out when you continue. It's wiped out to those that they have genuinely given up of these things. And they have genuinely walking in the ways of God and trusting God and believing in God and everything. So when the devil comes back and brings those things that they have done in the past or those things, that he begins. You begin now, be, tell the devil because you know where you are. Say, no, that was then. Let's, let's even uh, assume that now you fall and you're doing this. Don't remain there. Pick yourself up and begin to repent and ask God to forgive and cleanse you because the enemy have one thing that to continue to keep you in bondage. He will keep you in bondage. Uh, you're trying to turn left and right. You cannot go left and right. Everything that, wherever that you go in, that because why? He has some things over your head and he's holding over your head. But I am here to let you know, here to let the people of God know. He said, you have wiped out the handwriting of the requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us. And then, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he went to the cross, he nailed my sins on the cross. So if I come to Christ, right now. He nailed everything I did in the past, Mokoro Masa. Everything I did, I, he nailed it on the cross so the enemy now have no right when he come to trying to accuse me. I'm able to tell him that look here, I am no longer that person that you knew. That person that used to do A, Z, B, D, that, that you know that I used to do. I didn't know better. That is what I was doing but let me tell you, he have nailed all that on the cross for me. So I am free from your bondage. I am free from sin. I am free from fornication. I am free from adultery. I am free from gossiping. I am free from hatred. I am free from jealousy. I am free from disrespect. I am free from anything that the flesh lead you to do. I am free from it because he nailed all that on the cross. I am free from drinking. The Bible says give alcohol to fools. Now I know I am not fool. So I will not partake of it. You want to live for Christ. It's not about friends. It's not about whosoever. I say to you, very soon, chains are being broken over the people. Over the people of God's life. 
But the enemy is also furious. He bringing something to a point that the messages will be diluted. Preaching will be something that you go to church, but you don't really hear the word of God. For the word of God to chastise you, for the word of God to really make you want to repent. You, you, you come to church, you leave church, and you go sin. And you still come to church, and then you do whatever. And you go outside, and you continue to do. Because what will make your flesh feel good is what the enemy, do you understand? What the enemy wants the people, because you want to continue to have access, to hold you and to keep you bonded, to make you think that you cannot come out of his, come out of his bonded. Because by the handwriting that was written against me, he nailed it on the cross. So I am no longer a thief. I am no longer a fornicator. I am no longer a coromasa. I am no longer a liar. I am no, everything that was in my bloodline. If we are able to get those that came before my glory be to God, that he have given, he have shown me mercy and call me and deliver me from the hands of them. So I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I am free from your bondage. I'm free from your bondage. I'm free from any bondage that have been in the, whether it's witchcraft bondage, I am free from witchcraft bondage. I am free from witchcraft manipulation. I am free from anything that has ever been in my bloodline, whether it be my mother's bloodline, whether it be my father's bloodline. I am free from it in the name of Jesus. Some people say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to be delivered. I don't know. No, my Redeemer live. My God live. He lives. So I declare that I am free. I declare that I am free. Can I have some people to declare that I am free? I am free. My household is free. My children are free. That church is free. We are free from bondage. We are free from anything that has been holding us down. I am free from it in the name of Jesus. I am free from divorce. I am free from late marriage. I am free. I am free. I am free. From limitation. Whatever limitation that been in my blood now lord i am free from it i am free that limitation has been lifted it has been i am free from shame i am free from lie i am free i am free oh god my children are free in the name of jesus i am free because satan and let's go to the revelation revelation am i talking to someone Revelation 12, verse 10. Revelation 12, 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now, ha now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and for sisters. The, for, the for the accuser of our brethren. Who accuses them before our God. Who accuses us. Satan's work is, let me tell you, he will accuse you before God. He go to God because the thing is, he cannot, he, he cannot fight you on his own accord unless he gets permission, unless you permit him. You permit him is what you do that is against the ordinances of God. The moment because he monitor you, the moment you you do that, he now have the access. He say, "Hey, let me let me go," because you give him the permission to come because you are broken the laws of God. But when the laws of God, you have not broken the laws. The protection of God is upon you. Do you understand? It is we that break His law, not God that breaking the law because Satan now go and accuse and begins ah did you see yesterday what he did did you did you see why he's on the phone the things he was looking at did you see you understand you thinking the devil is trying to do one well, making you lost of everything you watch and check what you watch you saw you saw somebody you know somebody you see somebody nude and somebody this and somebody that and you see it online you scroll you just pop out hey close your eyes and then 
Because anything that we watch that is not distant. And what we hear, we, we, it's become a seed and planted in us. And it begins to lead you to do. I'm talking about that you are free. Ask yourself that. For you not to be free, what are you doing for you not to be free? What is it that you are letting it in? Praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 2. Hello, are we there? Amen. You see? No, sorry. Go to Psalm 1. You see, blessed is the man who walk not in the counsel of ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners. Blessed is he. Praise the Lord. If we, you say, blessed is he. And then, who walks not in the counsel? That means that in the council of people that gather together and whatever council, whatever talk, whatever conversation that going on that you know it is wrong but you take part in it and you continue. That is a doorway. That is something that gives the enemy access. You understand? He begins to accuse you before in the book of Revelation. He take that council. You sit in the place of scofo. You sit and you laugh. You sit and you discuss and you sit and you, you talk about someone. You have no idea. Somebody bring it, you chip in and order instead of you and I have to take a stand and be able to do that we open, the, you see the enemy look for, let me tell you, that is his job if you, if you read the book of Isaiah, he said uh, God created the, created the wicked ones also to do his work so whatever he have to work just like the way, just like the way you go to work, Satan also have to work so he, he will also create this thing and see if you are going to lead, you are going to fall into it, do you understand? He will now begin to bring one or two and then they begin to sit, begin to discuss something in, in order we have come to a place where we have been accustomed that when we hear something we don't even verify we just believe you know we just run along with it we just run along let your discernment be strong don't let us borrow offense you are my friend and you are angry so I just borrow your offense and I fight your battles for you hello hello I'm talking about I am free from bondage what will make you for the bondage to me is what I'm talking to you about. Because when we sit in the place of scofo or stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scofo, if we don't do this, but we delight in the Lord, praise the Lord. What is right is right. Put what is right, right. Don't let your personal destiny to come in and then the enemy begin to just man manipulate our feelings and everything and emotion and everything. The other day, last month, or, yeah, last month, we begin to pray against feelings because feelings is something that if you don't take care, it's going to lead you in a place that you don't. Submit your feelings into the hands of God. I pray that our discernment will be strong, that we'll be able to discern. Because when you discern the ways of God and what God is doing, you're going to understand. You're going to write. Not everybody that can discern, you understand. Not everyone that can discern, they just go by how they feel. No, feelings are not permanent. Feelings, they change. You can feel something today. Tomorrow, you don't feel that no more. Hallelujah. If we go back to the Colossians, the Colossians, amen. When we go back to the Colossians now, we read. Let's go back there. Colossians 2. F 14, right? Yeah, 14. Colossians 2.14, that he have wiped out the handwriting, the charges, the things that we were doing before. He have wiped it out. 
And Romans 8 to 1 also say there is no condemnation. So when you come to Christ, the enemy will try to condemn you. He will try to bring your old stuff and your old things that things you have done that was wrong. He will try. You have to remind the devil. You have to remind the devil that hey, you are the accuser of the brethren. Oh, you did this and you did that. You know, God don't love you. You tell the devil that God loves me. I'm no longer under your manipulation. I'm no longer in bondage. Before I was in bondage, when I didn't know Christ, that I didn't know, he has forgiven me all my sins. The devil will threaten you to a point that you would that you're going to die. Say, no, I will live but not die. You might it might be that you are even on the sick bed and the enemy is manipulated because he wants to continue to keep that bondage. He wants to continue to keep that covenant. Do you want that demonic covenant that is in the family that he's trying to manipulate and all have been manipulated all these years? But you have to take a stand and make sure that you are on the lost side. No. I am free. I am no longer in bondage. That the Lord has, has wiped out the handwriting that was requirement that was against me. He has wiped it off. He has forgiven me my sins. He has forgiven me and he doesn't hold it against me. Just like the east is far away from the west. That's how God has wiped away and removed my sins from, from me and from him. He don't even remember. It is me that will remember. But God don't remember. So I am no longer under your manipulation, under your bondage in the name of Jesus. You begin to, you begin to pray against her or declare the voices that come in your head that begin to talk to you and talk down to you and all that. You have to discipline yourself and tell the voices that you know that, you know, I will tell you, I say, God ain't going to tell you that you are a failure. No. The devil will not come to you and begin to point some things out. You are a failure. No, I'm not a failure. I used to be a failure some time ago when I didn't know Christ. I am no longer under your bondage. I am free. Praise the Lord. And you say, having disarmed, let me tell you, having disarmed the principalities and powers, he made the public spectacular of them, triumphant over them in it. He put them to shame. Jesus put them to say, so that is why I am victorious. That is why victory is mine. That is why I have overcome. If it is what divorce that is in the family. No, I have overcome divorce. I understand I might go through. I might, I might be going through one or two things in my mind. But let me tell you that I'm overcomer. That's how you speak to the devil. I'm overcomer. I might be struggling. Maybe I'm looking for a job. I can't get it. But let me tell you. He disarmed all this, all that. And he nailed it on the cross. So I thank God. I believe that he's preparing and working some company for me to have my name. He said, you speak this, this way to the devil. I am no longer in bondage. Man, you are 40, 45, you 35, you, you still single. The devil will be speaking that to your ears. You say, my rape, the rape that was taken, my husband, God is preparing my husband for me. As I am single, I'm enjoying my relationship with God. I am free. You are able to manipulate my bloodline. Some that this didn't, didn't marry and some it, it got, it, they got disappointed. But not me. Because why? I am free. I am delivered. My life is in the hands of God. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. According to his word in the book of Romans 8. 1. So let me tell you devil. Get deep behind me. How many of us who speak when you hear the voices? You think that the voices is to only certain people. Satan, he whispered to the ears of the people, every single person. Oh, the doctor say, did you see the report? Oh my goodness, you have this and you have that. He said, no. His words say, by his stripe that I am healed. It might be my blood, but man, not me. I'm in the family of Jesus. I am blessed, but not cursed. 
you begin to speak like that. I am so free. I am free in Christ Jesus. I am no longer in bondage. The devil is afraid of this words like this. When you speak clearly like this, open it and open your mouth. Not to speak it in your head. Some people, they say, you think you say it in your head. No, speak it aloud. Somebody said, I've been saying, I've been saying. Continue to say until you see it happening. Things turn around. Hello, are we here? Remember, beginning of the year, the 31st night, the Lord gave, gave a word. He said that just shall live by faith. And then those that play church, I will spit them out. He said, I will spit them out. People got mad and angry at me. You can get all mad and angry at me. God's word is God's word. They call on myself. That was spiritual. You only talk about church. You talk about your relationship with God. You play God. You play God. You plan. You pretend. Some people pretend. You understand? I know God. I love God. I hear God. But you don't hear nothing. No. Go to God and ask God genuinely to save you. That you genuinely want to be saved. My dear, don't play. Because one day you'll be here. Tomorrow your eyes are closed. Ask yourself, where are you going to be? Would you be, where are you going to be? Close your eyes for a second. And you are no more on this earth. Where your spirit, your soul going to be? Because the body will remain on the earth. But I am no longer in bondage. I am no longer in bondage. My family are no longer in bondage. I am no longer in bondage. In the name of Jesus. I'm no longer your Satan. No. I belong to Jesus Christ. When you live in sin. He has that authority over you. Even one distance. So we pray every day. That we're going to live a righteous life. You can't pretend before. How long can we pretend? But we cannot pretend before him. Ekoromasa. We want to be in a church that we come to church and we go out and we do whatever we want. And we just still come before his presence without we not being afraid. Let me tell you, a thousand years is as a day before God. A day will come. You might not enter. As you are entering, you're going to see that he strike you down. You say, just like the days of Sapphire and Ananias, that they lie before him. Do you understand? He has given us enough time. And then this thing, we are confessing the negative instead of us confessing the positive. Oh, it's not going to work. How, how is it going to be? I've been doing this. Check the heart. Are you genuinely doing it with your heart? Or are you just doing it? Ekoromasa. Some people do it because why? They want God to come in. The moment God begins to break them through and bless them, they put God at the back. God is not so we shouldn't be used as that we use God. I want you to understand. Ask yourself. How would you feel if somebody used you and dump you? We are users. A lot of people are users. Praise the Lord. But yet we think, oh, God is not hearing me. God is not doing this. God is not doing that. Take an inventory of your life and assess your life and ask that where you stand with him. Praise the Lord. Many of you can have also think, oh, God is not here. I mean, I'm going through this. Why is he not that? Why is he not? My dear, he don't owe you anything. He's still delivering. He's still saving. I am free. Declare that you are free. Don't see it before you believe it. Christianity is not what you see before. What you don't see, but you hope for. You are hoping that this and this to happen. Praise the Lord. I am free. I am out of bondage. I'm no longer bound. The devil don't have power over me. Satan, you were a liar. Get deep behind me. That was then. When he's reminding you of things that you used to do. Remind him of Corinthians 2. What he did. What Christ did for you. He have done it for me. In the name of Jesus. 
He nailed everything on the cross. He make a, a public spectacular of the devil that's speaking to you. He make public spectacular of him. He shamed him. He disarmed the principalities and powers and witches and wizards. He destroyed. In the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians says, he said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against powers of darkness, rulers in high places, a koromasa. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I am free. No, declare that you are free. Say, I am free. I am free from whatever bondage that in my bloodline. I am free from it. I'm free from difficulties. I'm free from problems. Upon problems, failure, I am free from it. Jealousy, I am free. Enviness, I am free. Delay, I am free. Procrastination, I am free. Do you know procrastination? The enemy, can, you know something, they procrastinate. The enemy will make you procrastinate in your own life, but before you realize, years has passed you by. Oh, I will do it. Oh, I'll get up and pray. Oh, I will do it. Oh, I will do it. You know you can do it, but you procrastinate it. And then before you realize this, then there's another thing. He steal time from you. He steal time in the book of Ecclesiastes. When you read it, they talk about time and opportunities. and I, It happened to it all. Last week, we stood on it and prayed the way God made me understand. He said, the time and chance that I gave in you, you have utilized it very well. You see, I love when God speaks to me this way, not what a man think of me. He said, the time and opportunities I have given you, I've seen you manage it very well. So I saw myself praying that and all that. But somebody will, in their eyes and their mind, you're not doing it the way. But God sees that you manage it very well. He said you utilize it very well. He's not looking at plenty and a lot. Sometimes God has to take you to that journey of one in one to work on you to a place, to, to come to a place in him because he's teaching you something. So what I put you over and whatsoever I entrusted in your hand, the time and chances, I'm not misusing it. Some misuse the time and chances. You have to ask him and ask him that God, where am I? Show me where am I right now. Where what I need to do it right and what I need to. God help me so I can do it the way you want it. Because we all have eyes, and the eyes we look at people and we see their life, and we are thinking, This is not how you do. Somebody will sit back there and just begin to just look at you and then just say, mm -mm, You should want to do it that way. You better rather do it that way. You but you're not the one. No. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Opportunities that He gave us that we will not procrastinate. Lord, help me though. I don't procrastinate what you have entrusted. You know, things that you need to do that you know you need to do, you are lying there. I'll do it tomorrow. And things that you need to acquire in the time of your teenage, now you have to pass the teenage and acquire in your 20s. Things that, things that you need to acquire. Remember, we pray, we pray about it in this house. The time that they will begin to pray, we pray about it for, for some time. Things that you need to acquire in your 20s, you're not able to acquire it. Sometimes just take, you know, trace your step back and watch where God show me what, what are the opportunities that you gave me that I did not. I did not utilize it. Some the opportunity will come. It might come from a place you don't like. It might come from somebody you might not like. But God can use anybody. The day Lord, the Lord made me understand that children of Israel, when they were living in Egypt, who? The Egyptians, they were all, they do what? Astrology, they do all that. But they have to gather and bring their pot and bring this thing to help the children. The Bible also said that I will give the wealth of the Eden to what? To the righteous. So God can use anybody. You might not like the person, but it might be opportunity. Hello? Why oh, are we here? Praise the Lord. Say, I am free. Say, I am free. Hello? Say, I am free. 
The Lord say, I should tell you somebody. So I should tell you, work on your heart on this side. Work on your heart. The quick temper thing. Quick temper thing. Say, so work on it. That is where the enemy is standing and using to fight and to delay to work on you. Right now, they see something great and good coming. Right now, something good. And that good thing I'm seeing is in the area of marriage. Check your heart. That you don't get so angry and I bought it. So write it down and record it. I don't need to point you. I don't need to call you. Because something good is coming. But do you know before we all get to that place, you see, before you pass it, before you get promotion, there should be what? A test. Because you see, it's coming. It's a marriage proposal. But because of your temper, the temper that you have, the person will come and you might not even know, you might not see, you might not even feel that he's the one, but before you realize that he's the one and everything, but because of your temper, you're going to use it. Hey, 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 hey. The person just pass you by. God said that if that happened, this thing here, I won't be surprised from now on, watch now on. But you're going to cry and cry and cry. I've been praying. I've been doing this. Some of you checked the time you became saved. How long has it taken? Just yesterday. You just came yesterday, but you have all everything to talk about. Hey! You have a lot of complaints. I'm talking about bondage. These are the things that keep us bound. Some have been saved for 30, 40 years. And they are faithful in the vineyard of God. And they're still waiting on the Lord. And they're still trusting in him. Because God can trust them. But you, yesterday, you can. You want a quick, 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 fast, fast, fast. Do you know when you get a quick and fast? You abandon God because what you did not suffer to get, you don't respect it. Whatever is handed off free to you, you don't respect it. Praise the Lord. Declare that I am free. Because you are hearing it to set your soul free, that your soul will be free, that you will no longer be in bondage. Some their their bondages, you understand? Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's I know, you know, you know. It's like you know, you know, you know everything. You know, you know. But the thing is that you don't know. You feel like you know. Some people feel like when they are speaking tongues and I do this and that, I know, my dear. I'm so searching him. I'm so praying. I'm so trusting. I'm still. It's not everything you're going to understand. Stop thinking you have to understand everything. It doesn't work like that. Not everything, but you can trust him. Praise the Lord. And the enemy have manipulated to use this kind of things to keep the people of God in bondage. Meanwhile, because the Bible says lack of knowledge, my people will, they perish. Meanwhile. You have been in bondage. And you have been kept in bondage. And the Lord, because of these things and everything, but you are free tonight. We're going to, we're going to be free. Tonight we're going to be what? Free. Hallelujah. Stop thinking and feeling that it's not working. It's not working. It is working. Because God is not showing you everything. If you only see the process and the spiritually things he's doing, you'll be amazed. He have nailed everything on the cross. He nailed it on the cross. Your past, your past things and everything, he nailed it on the cross. But the enemy keep reminding you. And you also, instead of you rebuking the devil, you find yourself now responding to the devil and you go back to your vomit. You go back to your vomit. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God. Somebody say, I am free. I am free from sin. I am free from anything 
that is holding me down. I am no longer in bondage. So you know whatever sin that holds you down, you mention it secretly to yourself and declare that you are free from this. God has delivered you out of it. He has given you power and authority out of it in the name of Jesus. I am free. Praise the Lord. Please be distant of what the Lord just said. That's very soon there will be a breakthrough, but you must pass the test. Anytime I see God say something like this, tell it, I say to people, declare that you're going to pass, but you see that people just fall right back in it and fail the test. And you, let me tell you, if you don't pass this test, you will complain and complain for the rest of your life because you must pass it. The last time I told someone, they fail it, and I kept quiet. You must pass it. Somebody is coming in your way. As you pass the test and as the marriage comes, you'll carry the family along. You'll carry your whole family. You'll see financially, money-wise, you will not smoke. So be obedient. You being alone right now and all that. Ekoromasa. It is not something that, no, it is God himself that working on you. Let everything go. Just be yourself and trust him. And do not discuss this when this thing takes place. It will, be, it will start like a phone call. You'll be on the phone talking, talking, talking. The person will say that, can I, can I come and visit you? Can I go see your mom? Can I go see this? Can I go do that? It's going to be an amazing thing. It's going to be so amazing. It's obedient. If not, that because God is breaking that bondage, is breaking that whatsoever that it is that has been in the family. He wants you to walk on the path that it will not be like the way your mother went, the marriage, everything. He doesn't want you to be like your own. Your own will be different. All depends on you when you be obedient to God and submit completely to the Lord and let it go and let it be whosoever they spit at your face, take the towel and wipe it off. Because he's teaching you humility. He wants people to see you and they can identify Christ in you, not to respond in it, thinking. Someone you thinking that you are that, you are that. You're trying to give lectures to everyone. And meanwhile, you yourself, you need deliverance. Hello? Praise the Lord. Wave your hand to Jesus. Am I getting on your nerves? Yes. Wave your hand to Jesus. Words like this, it come and it just enter in our heart and be cutting us. Stop thinking, oh, pastor, hate me. No, I don't hate anybody. If I hate, the Lord will deal with me. There's no hatred here. Me, I don't have hatred in me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Something good and something great is about to happen. All right, let's turn on our feet. And I want you to de declare after I say, God, help me to pass whatever test that is coming in my way. Help me to pass it in the name of Jesus. And help me to give out my old ways. Give it away in the name of Jesus. Say, devil, hear me. I am no longer in bondage. I am no longer under you. I am in Christ Jesus. And I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. And everything has become new. So therefore, get thee behind me. You cannot hold it against me. My sins are. God nailed it on the cross. Jesus nailed it on the Jesus cross. On he the disarmed cross. you. He, he said he disarmed you. He As a matter of fact, he has wiped out the handwriting. Wiped out the Every handwriting, handwriting. That, was requirement that was a requirement against me. He has wiped it out. He has wiped it out. And he has taken it, on, has the taken he it has on the cross. He has taken it on what, the cross. What is in my bloodline? What is in my Whatever blood sin in my bloodline, you have blood nailed line. it on the cross. He has nailed it on you the say vagabond. vagabond. You have nailed it on the cross. You say, I will not be a vagabond. Be my a vagabond. children will not be a my vagabond. In the name of Jesus. Declare that I will not be a vagabond. My children will not be a vagabond. Whatever 
handwriting uh, that is written uh, against me is on the cross. He nailed it on the cross in the name of Jesus. He nailed it on the cross in the name of Jesus. And he disarmed the principalities and power. He made a public uh, spectacular of them all and he triumphant over them so I have triumphant over you in the name of Jesus I have triumphant over procrastination I have triumphant over delay I have triumphant over shame I have triumphant over poverty triumphant over delay marriage in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you and I bless you say I thank you and I bless you say I have triumphant over the voices uh, the voice. in my head. In my Whatever head. demonic voices Whatever that voices are speaking to my ears, uh, I have triumphant over it. I have triumphant over it. And I command you voices that you will no longer, you can no longer be speaking to me again. I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. I have triumphant over death. I have triumphant over death. I will not die, but I will leave uh, to declare the glory of God. I have triumphant uh, over shame. I have triumphed over shame. I have triumphed over everything in the name of Jesus. So your handwriting, the handwriting that is against me, oh, I have triumphed over it in the name of Jesus. Now you listen. You say, I will not start something when I am almost done, then I, I lose it. How many of us understand what I'm saying? You do something. You be in a relationship. Whatever you start, you start to do something is going on well. Everything you excited. All of a sudden, something just came across and they just junk it from you. You say, "I have triumphed over it." I have triumphed over it. No, you didn't say. It. I don't think that you really understand what I'm saying. Neither do you mean what you just said. How many of you understand what I'm saying? You're almost there. You're almost there. It's like, let's, let me use like school. You're almost there. You did everything. You did the exams. Before you realize it, the exams is giving you a different report. Say you have triumphant over it. I have triumphant over it. You study, you are, going to st you are going to do the exams. You don't seem to pass. Say I have triumphant over it. I have triumphant over it. I will pass every test. I will pass every test. You want to do a business, but almost you are doing it. You try, you understand? You start doubting yourself. The enemy now starts speaking into your ears and you are doubting yourself. And then before you realize that something come across, instead of you push forward, you just stop. Remember I said, you stick with something. If you want certain shape and you go to gym and you, you eat well and you continue to do it and you continue to do it, you see results. The same thing with prayer. Hello? So I have triumphant over it. I have triumphant over it. I will not start anything. I will not start anything. When I'm almost there. I'm then I lose it. Then I lose that it. devil is a liar. Say, so I, I cancel and I abort it. I cancel and I abort it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will not start anything. I will not start and then I lose it. I am no longer in bondage. I am no longer under you. The devil, you were a liar. Satan, you were a liar. I will not be humiliated. I will not be ashamed. I will never be put to shame. I cancel and I abort it in the name of Jesus. My children will not be vagabond. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Say, my children will not be vagabond. My children will not be vagabond in the mighty name of Jesus. I have, I have triumphant over it. I have triumphant over it. In the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In Dorianu will shake it. We're standing on Galatians and Revelation and Romans. Ekoroma Siki Yamandama. Yeki Andara Mose. Yeki Andara Mose. Yeki Andara Mose. 
my Lord and my God. I thank you that you have wiped out to God. Out to God, you have wiped out the handwriting that was requirement that was against us. Whatever handwriting against me, whatever handwriting of God, whatever accusation, from the enemy against me and my children, my brother, against this church. Lord, I thank you that that handwriting that was requirement against us, O God, which was contrary to us, O God, you have this armor, you have nailed it to the cross, you nail every handwriting, you nail delay on the cross, you nail everything. My Lord and my God fail were on the cross. You nail it in the name of Jesus. Ekori akata, sheki andara mose. My ekotoro kata, sheki andoro. Si andoro, my ekori andoro. Maziki andoro, sheki andoro. My ekotoro kata, ekori anu o sheketi. Ekori anu o sheketi. Sheki anu o sheketi. Whatever I'm writing. Whatever handwriting that was against me, the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary, Father, to us, O God, you are taking it out on the way, you are taking it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross in the name of Jesus. My Jeki Adara, in Dorian Woshe, Eki Anu Woshe, in Dorian Woshe, my Yeko Torian Woshe, Moziki Anu Woshe. My Lord and my God, in the Locotolo, Jeki and the Locotolo, Mazieke, there is no condemnation, no condemnation in Christ Jesus. My Lord and my God, and the Locotomasa, 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 and the Oh, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation to those that cry Jesus. My Ekutu, my Ekutu, my Ekutu, my Ekutu. In Dokutu Ekete, Father God, we thank you. The embarrassment, the overwhelm, for you nailed it on the cross. You nailed it on the cross in the name of Jesus, and you make us spectacular. Father God of embarrassment. To God, of the enemy of God, my Ekoto, Mazi Ekoto, Sheki Ekoto, my Ekoto Moses, Indoro Masaka Yandari, Sheki Yandari, Abo Soto, my Ekoto Yandari, Sheki Yandara, Sheki. Declare that you are free. You are free from bondage. You are free. I am free from bondage. I am free from whatever situation, whatever problem that have come against me. My Lord and my God, we nail all that on the cross. We are free of God. Your church is free of God. My Yekuri Andari. Indoro Masa. Yeki Indoro. My Yekuri Andoro. Sheki Andoro. Mazi Andoro. My There is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. So do not condemn yourself. The devil is the one that condemning you. Tell the devil that there is no condemnation. The Lord has forgiven me all my sins. He took it on the cross and nailed it on the cross. I am free of God. I am. Free of God, free from bondage, free from every accusation. Free of my Jehoto, my Jehoto, and God is my judge. Ekoro masa, jendere masa, eki andara, e andara mozi ketele, mazi ekoto, makuri ekoto, shakuri ekoto, mandoro mose. Declare that you are making progress, you are breaking through. Ekori anuji, e mandori anuji. Ve ha bo sha daria ve ha bo
There is no condemnation. There is no condemnation to those that in Christ Jesus. So therefore, O God, my Ekiandara Masa, Emandorian was shekete, Ekorian was shekete, Mazian was shekete, Indorian was shekete, my Ekotoro Masa, Emandoro Masa. Lord, I thank you, O Lord. I bless you, O Lord. Ekorian was ye, O Mazukuriandara. Thank you, I am free. I am no longer bound. We are free of all. We are no longer in bondage. Eliana Kata, free of all. My Ekotoro, we are free in Christ Jesus. Ekoriandara Moseketere, my Ekotoro. Makuri Ekete, Mozi Ekete, Mozi Kiyandoro, my Ekotoro Yandoro, Mazi Yandoro, my Ekotoro Yandoro. I am free of all. I am free of all. My family are free of all. My children are free of all. Your church is free of all. Their souls are free of all. We are all of them. Ekoriyan Moses, 
Praise the Lord. We are praying. Please, I don't want to uh, call anyone. I'm making a gem. We are canceling death. You declare it personally to yourself that I cancel death over my life. Whatever they planning, whatever they have planned, and they are waiting for me to fall in, I cancel that over my life. I declare that I will not die. It's because God nailed all that on the cross in the name of Jesus. So therefore, I will not die. I cancel it over my life. In the name of Jesus, so let's begin to pray. Ela 
Amen. We are praying again. The same person. I see like a humiliation in your workplace that will cover you. We pray and cancel every humiliation, every shame, every firing. We come against it. We abort it in the name of Jesus. And we'll send it back to this. Because he nailed all that on the cross. He nailed humiliation on the cross. So we are praying against her. Every humiliation in the work coming from the workplace. Humiliation that they will say that they will fire you. We cancel and we abort that in the name of Jesus. So let's begin to pray. <laughs> Lord, you the humiliation of the cross. You nail it on the cross of God. In the name of Jesus, for we have been set free. We are free of God. Free indeed. My Yekoto. My Yekuri Ekete. My Yekoro Masa Kayanda. In Dori Anuoje Keteri Anuoje. Ekori Anuoje. Emakori Anuoje. Father, the God I declare, they will not let me go. In the name of Jesus, declare the King of Masa. They will not let me go. I will not lose my job, O God. In the name of Jesus, as the enemy intent to go. My Yekoto Yane. My Yekori Ozie Father, in the name of Jesus, having this arm of God, principalities and power, thank you for this arm in there. Those in my workplace, that fight in the war, in Koryakata, fighting against the works of my hand. Thank you for Lord God, for this arm in the war, the appearance of God, for canceling the appearance and making the war, made them a public spectacular of God, in the name of Jesus, in Koryakata, in Koryakata, I triumph all over them. I triumph all over their plans. I triumph all over their plans. I triumph all over their plans. The assistant, the put in place, Jackie and Bolo, Jackie and Bolo, Jackie and Bolo, Ezekiel and Bolo, Maya Koto, Maya Koto, 
Lord, we thank you. Father, we bless you, God. Every shame and disgrace of God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for nailing it on the cross. Whatever disgrace, whatever family coming from the workplace, Lord, we cancel. And we are brought it up. We declare, declare that you will not lose your job. You will not lose your job. As the enemy tells us, whatever system they put in place of God, whatever firing that is going on in my workplace of God, Asheki Andoro, Ekotori Andoro, Eziki Andoro, Ayekotoro Masa, O King of Glory, in the name of Jesus, Ekori Anoje, Indori Anoje, Ekori Anoje, Indori Anoje, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we bless you that we are free. We've been set free. I've been set free. Your church is free. We are free of God. In the name of Jesus, every shame we are disgrace. Thank you, O God, for delivering us out of it. Thank you for delivering us out of this grace and shame. Out of humiliation. Out of emotion. Thank you, O God, for the chain that taking place. My Amen. Amen. We are praying for someone that the Lord say you are worried. Worry about work, worry about job. In the book of our road, sorry, Matthew 6, verse 25, said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat and what you will drink, and know about your body. The worry is not of God. So anyone that is worried, the Lord is reminding you that worry is not of him. Don't worry about whatever going on in your life, whether it be your workplace, whether it be then. Look at how it's revealing and bringing it for us. You worry so much because when you worry, the worry is not a karamose. It's preventing you for you to be able to 
bless the name and establish you understand establish certain things so we're going to pray against worried he said you are worrying that we are worrying about your work worrying about what is going on worried about what will become of your life if that didn't if that didn't be if it didn't be what will become of me god got you whatever you thinking it is not what is going to happen what you are thinking that you are worried about your job you are worried about what is going to be what you are thinking is not what is going to be do you understand? You have to trust God and trust Him. That is why He's bringing it for us to pray. So as you are praying, as you are praying, you go home, you have to lay before God and thank Him and work on this worry. Because if you continue to worry, because you are calculating, you're calculating this, calculating worry, calculating relationship, calculating all that, my dear, stop all that calculating because it's not going to do you no good. Hallelujah. So let's pray against worried. How many of you understand what the Spirit of God is saying? Worried is not of God. Why do you worry? Why do you, why have you taken it upon yourself to worry? If you worry, you are tying the hands of God. That means that God cannot or is not able to do what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Because you are thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and worried and worry. Even right now you are sitting here. You are just worrying. Your mind just drifted a little bit over there. And then came. That's why God is bringing it up for us to pray. So let's open our mouth and begin to pray against worry. Down. Shake your hand. Lay the worry at the feet of Christ. Lay it at his feet. Shake your hand. Shake <laughs> Worried about their workplace, worried about the God. Shake your worried about the finances, worried about your Thank you, oh God, for delivering us out of warning. We are free from warning. We are free from warning. I am free from warning. We are free from warning, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. Jesus, we are praying that all things, all is working together 
for the glory of God in our life. Remember I said I don't want to point to anyone, but I want us to use as a general prayer for us to pray. All is working. The same person with a worry. God say all is working. All is working together for God's glory in your life. And everything that's going on is going to go on, tumble. It's like, a, it's like a ball. It's going to bounce and tumble and tumble and fall right in front of your face. That means that all the way it's going on, it's going to tumble, 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 and then fall, fall before your face. That means that all will amount to nothing. It's going to be a, something like a past has something behind you it will be like a, a story that you're going to look back and tell and then begin to bless the name of God, of the Lord. So I want us to pray and say, he says, so he says you should not worry. Do not worry. You are worrying too much. Thinking about all that that happened, the relationship, and also all that and all that. He said, God said, you don't know. <laughs> My plan for you, they are good, but not evil. Stop worrying and calculating. He said, even before as last night as you are home, you are sleeping on your bed. That's all you did. Worry. Back and forth to worry. Back and forth to worry. If God said this, and why was that? And this that he's doing and he did. And all that. God said, I should tell you that you are not God. So back down and stop it and sit back and just watch him and see the salvation of the Lord. And watch and see how everything is going to play out. All of that to just say, all is working together. And it's tumbled like a ball. That's how I'm seeing. Like this bounce back and it's going to fall at your feet. In the name of Jesus. He says, stop behaving and stop playing like God. He says, you are playing like God. You are making yourself God. Stop playing and, and know that you are not God. A Koro master. And be sure and realize that he is the God. Not you are the God. So he's working all together. Let's begin to pray the Lord. You are working all together for your glory. Hallelujah. Are we here? Amen. Amen. How many of you understand? Because so many things goes on in our lives. Sometimes we don't understand. And then we can't help it. By thinking about it and be worried and calculating. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We calculate it in our head. That's why I say I'm not pointing anybody. Me, I'm taking the prayer for myself. So I'm praying my praying for myself. You are calculating and thinking and thinking, and this is how I said, my dear, you cannot be calculating and thinking. Take the chair. If you have empty chair, take your hand and put and then tap the chair. Tap the chair down. Listen to me. Say, you devil. You listen to me. Whatever that going on in my life, it will amount to nothing. Whatever that going on, whatever that you have a hand in it, that going on, that have left me confused and perplexed, and I don't even understand what is going on. Let me let you know, it will amount to nothing, and it will go nowhere. God is working it together for his own glory in my life in the name of Jesus say I will not be anxious neither worried I will not be worried in the name of Jesus I am free from all these things all will work together for God's glory in my life in the name of Jesus so let's begin to pray Declare that it will be history. All these things, whatever that going on, will be history. We become the thing of the past. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God, my Shaka and Dada Mose, Jeki and Dada Mose, Kiamandana, Jeki and Dada Mose, my Ekotoria Patali, Indoro Masaka and Dada, Jeki and Dada Mose, my Ekotoro Mose, Indoro Mose Kiandoro, Jeki and Doro Sheketi, my Ekotoro Sheketi, oh. Oh, 
You disarm them over my life. You disarm them for my sake. You disarm them for everything I'm going through. Everything I'm taking place. You have disarmed them over my life. You have disarmed the witchcraft manipulation. You have disarmed the voices. Voices in the head of your people. You have disarmed the evil voices. You have disarmed the shame. You have disarmed the disgrace. You have disarmed everything that was working against us. You have this sound failure. You have this sound fear. You have this sound disappointment. You have this sound disappointment. You have this sound failure. You have this sound procrastination. You have this sound epoyan woje. You have this sound information. My echo to the akata. In dorian woje. Epoyan woje. My echo to the akata. Masiki akere. Jeki akere. Epoyan woje. In Korean Woje, a 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 Korean Woje, Jesus, you have to say, Jackie and whatever handwriting that was contrary, that was against us, you have been raised it up, you have nailed it on the cross in the name of Jesus. You have this arm dead to God, my Korean Woji, you have this arm dead to God, my we are praying then they will pray and commit our children we declare that our children we declare that they are not vagabonds they will not be vagabonds Neither are they vagabonds in the name of Jesus. So therefore, we can such plan of the enemy against their life in the name of Jesus. That may God order their steps uh, and for them to do what is right by God in the name of Jesus. We declare that they are free from the spirit of vagabond. That the enemy want to pro the enemy want to put it on them. That he has programmed that they, it should be their that lifestyle. That devil is a liar. Declare that they are free from the spirit of vagabond. The in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up our children before thee. Our children are not vagabond. So therefore, O God, I pray again the spirit of vagabond. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they've set against our children. Every <laughs> Children of God, Father God, they are free from the spirit of vagabond. They are free from it in the name of Jesus. For there is no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus. So therefore, would you put it upon the spirit of vagabond and ascend it to the pit of hell? And they are free of God. I declare they are free. I declare that they are free. I declare that they are free. Our children are free. They are free of God from vagabond spirit in the name of Jesus. My Jehovah, 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 Jehov
in Jesus name we are praying our last prayer I see confusion you are so confused the enemy is sending it's like the spirit of confusion and you be so confused on your mind so much and that confusion lead you into a place uh, you understand just to commit suicide leading to cutting leading so many things because know that it's not of God anytime that confusion come you should know that it's not of God so we take because we are free from confusion confusion is not of God your mind is like the mind the enemy attacking you have attacked your mind and you are so confused you don't even know what you are doing you don't even feel yourself anymore. So we pray against the spirit of confusion. We pray for the Holy Ghost to arrest that spirit in the name of Jesus. Confusion on the mind. We take authority over God. did not give it a spirit of confusion. No. Confusion is not of God in the name of Jesus. So let's lift up, let's lift up our word. This is our last prayer. So let's stand on our feet and begin to pray. We'll come against. Remember I said I will not point anyone. I'm not calling anyone. We are making the genuine prayer for all of us to pray. That spirit of confusion, I take authority over you. Declare, I am free from your bondage. I am free from you. In the name of Jesus. I am free from you. I am free from the spirit of bondage. Spirit of fear. Spirit of confusion. Je <laughs> Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for breaking me free. Thank you, O God. The power of confusion has broken over my life, has broken over my head, has broken over my head. In the name of Jesus. I pray the person of confusion. This is what the Lord is showing me. Somebody is speaking. This is you. And this is a person. And he's speaking that over your mind. But he's doing that. The person is doing that spiritually. And that's why you are confused. So I pray for God to show you in your dream. And as you sing it in the dream, come and tell me. I don't want to open my mouth to tell you that the color is blue. And the color is green. May the Lord himself reveal to you in your dream. So the confusion is somebody standing and speaking that. Speaking that. And as you speak, you hear it. You hear it in your mind. You hear it. You're speaking confusion. That you should be confused. This is what a person is trying to do. Be confused so much that you just leave the house. And we're walking and roaming about. Walking and roaming about. But that is not your portion. Declare, I am free from that. No, I don't think you mean it. Say, I am free from that. I am free from that. Anyone that's speaking into my mind. Anyone, Anyone that's speaking into my mind. Spiritually. Spiritually. Power of God. Power of God. Cripple them. Cripple them. Cripple them. Cripple them. In the name of Jesus. In the name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Let their words. Let their words. Let their words. Never come to me. 
never come to me. Let their words, sir. Let their words go back upon them. Go back upon them in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus become a barrier. Become a barrier between me. Between me and whosoever. And whosoever speaking into my mind. Speaking into my mind. Speaking to me. Speaking to me. Spiritually. Spiritually. To have me confused. To have me confused. That I don't know where I am. That I don't, I don't know, know where, where I am. It's like you just wake up and you just you just realize, oh my God, what happened to me? You are so confused. And you are just walking. Leave the house and just walking. Declare that that's not your portion. That is not my portion. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Because there is no condemnation. Because there's no condemnation. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That Jesus has set me free. Jesus has set me free. And whoever the Son of God set free. Whoever the Son of God set free. Is free indeed. Is free indeed. So I declare. So I declare I am free from this bondage. I am free from this bondage. This confusion bondage. This confusion bondage. I am free. I am free. I am free from worry. I am free from worry. In, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am free for all the things I'm thinking about that is not necessary. Everything to that are not necessary. Everything I'm thinking about that is not necessary. Everything I'm thinking about that is not necessary. I am free from it. I am free from it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We seal the prayer and the answers of the prayer with the precious blood of Jesus. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Please we take our offering. Amen. Yes, it's on the screen. Let's give our offering. God bless you all.